I have to keep track of this. Okay. I've only got two years. I would rather take this one at a time. Like, for example, we're on 490, we can stick with 490, and then we can, you know, next when we're done. All right, fine. Okay. Sure. Thank you. Sure. Uh, it was worth a try. It was after that. Okay. Um, the, uh, my name is Elizabeth Woodcock. I'm an assistant attorney general, and the attorney general's office is opposed to Bill uh, 492. Um, there have been a number of people who have spoken about the um, health issues, um, problems associated with marijuana use. <coughs> I'm not a physician, and I don't know all of the uh, ins and outs of how uh, marijuana may or may not affect individuals. I would say that it, uh, we already have an addiction problem here in New Hampshire, and it's a general concern of the Attorney General's Office that that is frequently associated with other crimes. Uh, make no mistake about it, we would be legalizing a narcotic, uh, uh, drug that has an effect on your ability to proceed. Um, I'm aware that 20% of the car crashes in New Hampshire, um, the, the driver has been uh, smoking marijuana. And there is a concern, and you heard it from the young people today, that, that the uh, use of the drug is on the rise. So when someone suggested that marijuana has never killed anyone, well, it can't. It's killed people here in, in New Hampshire when they could drive in cars. But if I, I look directly at the bill, and I have two concerns just associated with Bill 492. The first one is um, that it sends the wrong message to the citizens of New Hampshire in a very specific way. Uh, you, uh, some of you have asked about the impact of federal laws on this particular proposal. And the plain fact of the matter is that the federal laws will not change. Marijuana will continue to be, be an illegal drug for purposes of the federal government. Um, and, and that's an important thing to bear in mind, because if this committee and if the legislature sends the message to citizens of New Hampshire that it's all right to grow marijuana, it's all right to possess marijuana, it's all right to sell marijuana, um, they will be misleading the citizenship of New Hampshire into believing that something is legal when it is a federal crime to do the things, grow, possess, distribute this particular drug. The, the impact of that is, I think, twofold, and it's one of the things one of the representatives asked about how other states are handling the fact that uh, the narcotic has been made legal in Colorado and Washington. And, uh, it's, it's a problem, particularly with this bill, because what the bill does is it sets up a responsibility for the Department of Revenue to collect uh, taxes from the sale of what is federal contraband. Uh, I, I can't think of how a state government can go forward trying to collect taxes on something that is illegal federally. I just can't imagine how you can do it. The fallback position is if the Department of Revenue doesn't do this, then it somehow gets shifted over to the municipalities. Again, you're trying to put, with this bill, you're trying to put the government in the position of managing a, uh, uh, the, the distribution of something that is that constitutes a federal crime. Now, when you think about that in terms of an individual, uh, you think about that in terms of, oh, well, people think about, well, that someone cited that there were how many, oh, hundred thousands of uh, people who were convicted of possession of marijuana and were now serving time in federal prison. A lot of those people were indeed convicted of possession of marijuana, but it wasn't an ounce of marijuana. It wasn't a small amount of marijuana. These were people who pleaded guilty to possession of large quantities of marijuana. And if you don't believe me, you can look at the United States Sentencing Commission's report every year. They come out with a report every year. They'll tell you what the, the average sentences are. And the people who are being prosecuted by the federal government are people who are dealing in large quantities of the drug. But let's say it's legal in, in New Hampshire and someone starts growing it. That creates 
problems for them. Not only are they a violation of possession, potentially distribution, they also, if they don't declare the proceeds, they're, they're in violation of the United States tax laws. It's tax evasion. And how you would ever report on your taxes the proceeds of illegal sales of illegal narcotics, I don't know. The last thing that I would point out to you in, a, in connection with all of this is, again, you put these state entities, either the Department of Revenue or the municipalities in charge of trying to manage this particular um, proposal. They're, they're in the business of trying to manage contraband. And at the same time, the federal government can come in and seize, seize people's property if, in fact, they're growing marijuana. They can go through a, a civil forfeiture. It's not even a criminal, right, a criminal process. They forfeit the people's property. And I cannot, I can't figure out, and I have tried in looking at this bill, I've tried to figure out how the state government or the municipality then is somehow off the hook to the federal government for reporting any of these things. And again, because it's illegal, I, I, I can't understand how you could put another government entity in it. Now, it may be down the road that, that some state challenges the ability of the United States Con Congress to, uh, to regulate something like narcotics. And it may be, but it gets to the United States Supreme Court, and it may be, although I doubt it, it may be that the United States Supreme Court finds that, the, that under the Commerce Clause they don't have the right to regulate, regulate this, and under some of their other clauses they don't have the right to, to regulate narcotics. But up until that point, this bill puts these, these governmental entities in the position of having to try to cooperate with people who are breaking federal law. Um, I have, the, the concerns that I have to sum up are twofold. We have an addiction problem in New Hampshire. It's not a minor addiction problem. It's not certainly limited to illegal drugs. Alcohol is certainly a problem here in New Hampshire. This bill adds to that problem in, in the Attorney General's view. But the second thing is that even if New Hampshire, the New Hampshire legislature passes this bill, it does not affect the legality of this drug. And to try to suggest to the citizens of this state that it would is really uh, just going to mislead them. And I'll take any questions that you have. Representative Brady. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, is there any materials, drugs, what I would care for? that is in conflict, like this, statewide, with the federal government. Mm -hmm. I, I, have, I have tried to think of something that was analogous, and I have to tell you, I can't think of anything. Um, I was thinking last night, as I was looking at reviewing these bills, about the um, prohibition. And uh, certainly there were states that did not adopt prohibition. But once prohibition came in, it became a law of the land. And for good or for ill, I mean, there are many arguments either side as to whether that was a good, a good move or a bad move. It was ultimately repealed. But I can't think of anything that the federal government has made illegal that a state can then say, well, we don't agree with the federal government. Follow up. Follow up. Who would have to uh, arrest um, a New Hampshire citizen in order to be brought forward on federal charges? Uh, well, that question is, is a very good one, and it's more complicated than it, than it sounds. Uh, um, there are situations in which people are obviously federal agents. So a uh, drug enforcement uh, agent, uh, war patrol agent, if someone were coming in or leaving New Hampshire could arrest someone uh, uh, if they had an illegal narcotic. 
but you also have agents that are cross-designated uh, who may be uh, cross-designated to enforce uh, federal laws. Um, having said that, I want to point out that, that it's not, people think about it being the, the DEA agents, the Drug Enforcement Administration, but there are a number of federal agents that actually have responsibility for enforcing um, drug-related laws. So if a person decided to scatter a few seeds in the White Mountains in the National Park, they're done. I mean, it, that's pretty obvious. A state, it's um, any federal land, um, any um, anything of the type where it's not private, it's not it's simply state land. Um, anything on federal land of any type being grown puts that person in jail even though they're in New Hampshire it, it would not simply be the white forest, and I would recommend against doing that. Um, <laughs> because I, I think it, it would be very, very bad but uh, for the person in terms of their legal position. But, but marijuana isn't simply illegal on federal grounds. It's ir illegal if it's in somebody's, the, the trunk of somebody's car, or if they're, they're, they, they're growing marijuana down the street. It's an illegal drug for purposes of the federal law. And the federal government, the federal law has, it, 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 they call it the supremacy clause. It's the law of the land. And if it's illegal federally, nothing New Hampshire does. Absent persuading the people in Washington, D.C. to legalize it, nothing will change the legality of this federal law. Thank you. Representative Gagnon. Uh, I'm going to take, take my question. Okay, you're talking about federal law trumps state law. Am I correct? Yes, sir. Okay, follow up. Yeah. <coughs> What is Colorado and Washington State doing because they passed certain uh, well, pro marijuana laws? Well, uh, not to, to throw out a, a flippant legal phrase, but the jury is still out. Uh, I don't know. When I, when I look at those two actions, I, I, I have looked at them, but not as carefully, obviously, as, as uh, Representative Davenport, who investigated the uh, Colorado bill. I, I understand, that, and the Washington bill, I understand that, that they have passed these things. I don't know what the impact will be. Uh, and, and to put a, a finer point on it, even if, for purposes of this administration, even if Eric Holder, who's in, was the Attorney General of the United States, if he decides not to prosecute these cases in Washington or Colorado, there is no guarantee that a new administration or a new attorney general wouldn't take an opposite position. So I don't think that the, I think that the people in Colorado and Washington have no guarantee that the federal government will not enforce federal laws. Would you or not agree with me? Agree with me or not agree with me that the states are the laboratories of the country for various. You know, laws can be promulgated or, or prohibition can be rescinded or uh, to see how it plays out. I'm just being a devil's advocate here, man. Uh, uh, I am not a person who has studied political science. I, I'm, not a, I, I'm not an expert in where the laboratories of a country are. I, I think that a lot of great ideas come from states a lot of great ideas have come from the state of New Hampshire, and a lot of great people have come from the state of New Hampshire. So New Hampshire certainly can be a laboratory for good ideas. In this particular case, as I look at it, I, don't, I do not feel the Attorney General's office does not feel that this is a good idea from, from the outset. But even setting that aside, I don't know how you can have a laboratory if the federal government is saying your laboratory is illegal. Thank you. Representative Ginsburg, and I'd like to remind the members this is still the people to speak on this bill. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'd like to follow up on, on Representative Gagne's uh, question. You raised an interesting point about the problem of the conflict with federal law. Do you have any idea how 
people in Maine or California or other places where there are medical marijuana dispensaries handle revenue from marijuana-related activities with the IRS? I, I don't know the answer to that. Um, I, I am, however, reminded of the movie, the, uh, if you'll forgive me, The Untouchables. And the way that, if you watch the movie, The Untouchables, the way that they ultimately got Al Capone was with tax evasion. Yeah. And it was because he didn't declare the income that he got from selling bootlegged liquor. And, uh, and I don't know, I know that the current Attorney General is not interested in trying to pursue medical marijuana as a criminal <coughs> offense. I, I don't know if that is a long-term commitment for the Department of Justice, since all of the people who leave the Department of Justice are political appointees. I have to guess that it would change with the leadership of the Department of Justice and ultimately the leadership of the White House. So I, I, I don't know how Maine or California or anyplace else is trying to handle it with the IRS. I do know that it's still against the law. And if you're the problem it, you can be subject to criminal prosecution or civil forfeiture. The tax of the law. And the tax issue. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you for taking my question. Earlier you were seeking an analogy to, um, to this situation where you have state law versus federal law. Would, would, would there be any analogy between states legalizing gay marriage and the Defense of Marriage Act, which is on the way the Supreme Court? <coughs> The Defense of Marriage Act, I'm, I'm not an expert in this area, I'm just going to come right up and say that. The Defense of Marriage Act is not a criminal law, as I understand it. I don't know that there are penalties associated with it. I think that it, it, is, it is refusing to recognize basically what amounts to full faith and credit to states that recognize marriage. For example, I think what it says is that if New Hampshire makes gay marriage legal, Virginia doesn't have to recognize it. So I, I think that that's the way that it works. <coughs> I'm not aware of any criminal penalties. So that's, that's I, I think it's distinguishable, but I'm not an expert in that area. I'd be the first to admit it. And if someone else knows more about it, I would bow their superior knowledge. Thank you very much. Hey, did you have any written testimony? Uh, we are going to submit some written testimony at the end uh, after we have finished writing the document. It was a little bit delayed in doing it. But I intend to send, submit written testimony on all three bills. Thank you very much, Representative. For calling one of our final messages.